Welcome to Bethesda Church for the celebration of the seventh Sunday of Easter. Our homilist today is Father Landon Moore, associate priest at St. Mark's Church in Brooklyn in the Diocese of Long Island. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither our Savior Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory be to you, thee, O Lord. Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have been given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that you may know you and the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, that they may have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Lord. And I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to see uh, some familiar faces once again in uh, Bethesda Episcopal Church. And this past Thursday, we uh, celebrated the Feast of the Ascension. And this was the feast when Jesus started to work from home. He ascended into <laughs> heaven. You didn't know that one. Yeah. <laughs> But today's uh, scripture, we hear Jesus praying. And so what do we overhear as Jesus is praying for you? How will you hear Jesus' words in a different way? How might we understand prayer in a different way? Remember in the Gospel of John, there is no teach us to pray, rather we are taught how to pray the Lord's Prayer. And Jesus today is praying for us to be one, for unity. And unity is about loving each other as Christ has loved us. The love of Christ does not kill the one who disagrees, rather it dies for the one who disagrees. And he's praying for us to be one. And the analogy I wanted to use is the football analogy. If a team is not together, they will not win. All the components need to work together in order to get to that goal. And so Jesus is asking for us to be one. And what is the goal? The goal is to embody God's love, 
The goal is to make God's love known to all the world. Go out and make disciples of all nations. That is the goal. However, the church has not done this successfully in the thousands, 2,000 years it's been in uh, commission. And I don't want to gloss over the current situation that is currently buried right now, and I feel I could speak on it as someone who is, kind of has one foot in, one foot out, because I feel like it's buried right now, but it's going to reemerge in the coming weeks once this pandemic uh, receives a vaccine with all the nurses and doctors working so uh, gloriously, gl gloriously. But listening to the debates, hearing the conversations for the years, the months, uh, it pains me on both sides. Both sides of the issues um, have their points, have their arguments. But both sides end up hurting people. Both sides end up putting one person down and uh, lifting up someone else. Because the commission is this, love one another. And if we're not loving one another, we're not doing this commission. For we are called to love, not hate. I think about the, the, the story of Mary Magdalene who was caught in adultery. And all the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, crowded around her and she said, Jesus, this woman was caught in sin. The scripture says, stone her, what would you have her do? And Jesus knelt down, wrote in the sand and said, you without sin, cast the first stone. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we are not called to look, uh, look in the speck of each other's eyes. <clears throat> we are looked to look deeper than that, into our souls. That we are creatures of a living God. And for this unity, Jesus calls us to be one. Calls us to love each other as God has loved us. Jesus is no longer in the world. The incarnation is over. Jesus has been resurrected. He ascended to the Father from whence he came, but we are still in the world. And we are called to be Jesus' hands, his feet, and continue to be a blessing to others and be his presence to others in the midst of his absence with the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. United in prayer with the Blessed Virgin Mary and the apostles chosen by the Lord, let us ask God for what we need this day. For deeper faith in all members of the church, especially her leaders, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch, Michael, our Presiding Bishop, William, our Diocesan, Daniel, our bishop retired, and Marshall and Paul, our priests. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the well-being of this nation and its government, and for the safety of all who serve and protect us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the comforting of all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, and for the peace for the dying, especially those affected by the COVID-19 virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continuing work of creation and for the building of a more humane world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ministry of God's care and healing to others at our hands, and for abundant life in the reign of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For eternal joy for the faithful departed, and for consolation for all who mourn them, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we ask to see your goodness in answer to these prayers. Bring us to glory with Jesus Christ in the land where all are alive for you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.